And that is just a quick look at America and how we love to do quantitative easing. Everybody, welcome to the live stream on a Friday. So a lot of things to uh, cover. So let's uh, get to it, shall we? First of all, today's a great day. I think we're seeing some uh, nice appreciation. Now we have taken a hit lately, but it is what it is. Bitcoin's up 2.6%. Across the board, we're seeing green, and we like that. And if we take a look at it, coming over here to the logarithmic regression band, we can see that, yes, we are still undervalued. As you can see right here, this red line essentially is the fair value market. And if you take a look historically, we are usually, not usually, but for a good amount of time underneath that. Going back to 2015, we were under it for almost three years. And then as far as like uh, the next big bull run, we saw a little bit of a jump and then it came, comes back down. And then last one, we can see that, yes, it was uh, a little bit of a, a small piece comes up above it. And we really didn't do much in the last halving year until the end of October, early November, which really does coincide with the sell in May and go away and then come back in November. And it worked out perfectly. And I think we're kind of seeing that again right here as we jumped up oh, around March or so after we had a nice little little mini bull run because of the uh, Bitcoin ETF. But now we are below the market value or the fair market value band. And we can probably hit that maybe not until end of October, early November, maybe December. So we'll see how it happens. But uh, today, at these times, I feel like these are the times to actually accumulate. And the question then is, well, what do you accumulate? This is a great one. <clears throat> Taking a look at the crypto heat maps, we can compare this as far as like the US dollar compared to everything, which is what we always look at, right? But if you wanna take a, first let's take a look at this. US dollar over the last, let's just take 30 days. A little bit of a negative, although Bitcoin's doing pretty good. 200 days, Bitcoin's still doing pretty good. ETH, BNB, well, ETH's not doing so hot. ADA, AVAX, LINK, DOT, all that stuff, not doing so great. But there's some spackling of some pretty good performers. Solana, XRP, 4%. Watch out. But if we take a look at this over a year, you're still doing pretty good. And that's where all the money's made in the bear market. But if we take a look, then what should we have invested into? Looking backwards, if we compare this to, say, Bitcoin, we can see that over a year, you would have been just better just doing into Bitcoin. Although there are some outliers, BNB at 14% ton at 36% and Solana, I think the big winner, 232% and then some other ones here, ICP, uh, Fetch, Ave, and so on and so forth. But what about, say, compare this against Ethereum? Eh, not too bad. So it just depends on what you get into. That's what we have. Let's jump into the stories today or the news or the uh, what is actually happening in the crypto market. First of all, this is a, an old story. Uh, but I wanted to bring this back up to people's attention, which is Ledger. Now, I have a Ledger. I use it, and I also use a Tangem wallet. Now, for Coin Ledger, uh, just so you know that uh, I feel very safe with it, but there was one thing, and it's, it's something to be repeated because if we don't repeat it, we don't remember. Rep repetition equals memory. Repetition equals remembrance. We can see that, as, and this is actually from the Coin Ledger website. If you use this service called Ledger Recover, which I get why people would do, essentially they share your private keys amongst themselves and two other entities, so they split it up. But just so you know, if you do that and pay for that service, which is fine for me, I'm not gonna do it, but just know that as far as like legal compliance, governments could potentially access your seed phrase via subpoena if you use Ledger Recovery. Now, this is kind of a long shot, I have never had a subpoena by the government, but the year is still young. So I don't know. So just make that uh, something as your decision. Just wanted to bring this uh, raise attention because, hey, things can happen. And then gold. I'm, uh, no, I personally hold gold and a little bit of silver. And I actually have that in my Roth IRA account, as a matter of fact, as well. Uh, however, I found this post interesting. This is from Will Reeves. He says, uh, Costco gold is 9% not gold. And you can see right here in the image uh, that it's actually like, uh, what, 8.33%, but let's just round up, 9%. Uh, it says here that, uh, and this is on Costco, 
that 91.6% is a fine gold coin. It's pretty good, but your 9% of it is not gold. And I thought to myself, it's very strange though, because you know, the gold bugs talk about this. And they said this is actually, they, they, they point this out uh, from Nihilus. He says, American Eagle gold coin, not Costco, Costco gold. That's the standard for American Eagle, not just one sold at Costco. So you're buying these things knowing that you don't have 100% pure gold. It's kind of weird to me, but it is what it is. I just thought it was odd because we don't have to deal with that in Bitcoin. You buy one Bitcoin, it's one Bitcoin. I mean, you're paying for the nose now. Would have been better to do that earlier. But uh, it's interesting in the fact that you're not getting 100% pure gold. So keep that in mind. I have to keep that in mind too as I try to diversify. And speaking of gold and no second best, Michael Saylor, congratulations to MicroStrategy yet again, as it is acquired, geez, all these 18,000 Bitcoin for $1.1 billion at 60,408 per Bitcoin. So, I mean, he's doing the right things, dollar cost averaging. I know people will say, well, you know, it's very, it's, it's becoming very centralized. And what if Michael Saylor dies? He's actually been on record. And this was in the last uh, Bitcoin conference. He said, look, he goes, I have a living will. I have a trust. And the whole point for Bitcoin is to use the funds that I have, because I don't think he's got any kids, is to advance the topic of Bitcoin and not to sell that Bitcoin and to hold it until you know the millennia. So I thought it was just interesting that uh, they're, they're buying yet again, which we knew they would be. But what does that mean for centralization? Well, not too bad. But if you take a look here, as far as ETFs, and of course ETFs are not... It's not like BlackRock's buying them all up. They buy them all up for their clients. But it is custody by the majority, which is Coinbase. I think it's like nine out of 10 now. Uh, so hopefully nothing happens to Coinbase. But ETFs are holding right now, according to Bitcoin treasuries, uh, over 1 million uh, Bitcoin. It's pretty good. They have 5% of the total 21 million. I don't know if that's a great thing, but let me know what you think in the, con in the comments section. But as far as public companies, guess who number one is? That's right. MicroStrategy, and this is out of date. Number of Bitcoin is now 240. What is it? 244,800. So right now they've got 1%. Wow, I didn't know that. And now it's like 1.2%. So as far as centralization, it's true, it's happening. Is this the big bad thing? Depends on how you look at it. But that I find, uh, I find it positive that thank God MicroStrategy is buying and not like somebody else. So we'll go from there. But on the flip side, as far as centralized exchanges, congratulations to, looks like HTX, which has over 45 million users. Uh, they're going to integrate Bitcoin Lightning in, into its platform. So I like that, I like innovation. I like Bitcoin Lightning. I know some people say that it's, uh, it's not as great as, as people say, but look, Bitcoin Lightning, if you don't understand it, it's pretty much like having a bar tab. You know, you go in a bar and go, hey, I'll take uh, one beer, two beers, 10 beers. And at the end of the night, they're like, hey, Steve, uh, you know, you owe us 10 beers. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll settle up. And then you pay at the end, right? That's essentially what Bitcoin Lightning is, a bar tap. So this actually reduces costs. We like to see that. And this is good for HTX users. On the flip, on the other flip side coin of that, uh, Kraken's going to stop that. So this was a report. This just come out from Bitcoin News. Kraken has halted Lightning Network support for customers in Germany due to new regulations that go into effect on September 10th. And this is what it came from. This was uh, this today. Yeah. September 13th. Kraken drops Lightning Network in Germany for regulatory issues. I don't blame Kraken for bending the knee. They've already got kind of hosed over by uh, the SEC as they got sued twice by them. Good job, Gary. And they're just like, look, we just want to be in compliance. So just leave us alone. And this is what we got. So in its list of acceptable addresses, types for Bitcoin withdrawals, Kraken has removed the INBC prefix from its list of supported assets for German customers. That confirms Kraken's denial of lightning withdrawals. In response to a single customer inquiry, a support agent at Kraken attributed the, remo the removal to regulatory issues, offering a consolation, which was this, and th this is a direct quote, as soon as we are able to bring back the service, we will. So unfortunately, the lightning network is uh, not available for Germany users. Is there actually, it's a funny thing because the German government just uh, sold Bitcoin about a month and a half ago. Actually, they did a pretty good job, actually. And uh, this goes into effect on, no, yeah, it came into effect. It's already in effect. I, I, I apologize. September 10th, 2024. So sorry, Germany, you can't use Bitcoin Lightning. 
But if you transfer over to HDX, looks like you will actually have to do that. So let me know if that's a positive or negative comment, and we'll talk about that in the Q&A. And then lastly, before we get out of here, stable coins. I know this isn't a very sexy topic because uh, no one really they're like who cares. But I think that stable coins and payments are essentially the big killer app. And I know people don't really care about it, but when you see about the numbers, you will. So the U.S. and and I, and I think why you're going to be impressed by this, I think it's also because governments will also look at this, especially the U.S. government. And go, oh, look at that. The U.S. dollar is. Uh, being trapped around all over the world where we can't even get to it. So this is actually good news for the U.S. U.S. dollars taking over the world thanks to stable coins, a report. This is authored by Castle Island Ventures and uh, Brevin Howard. The report outlined how stable coin adoption is rising. And I'll, I'll link that in the description, I think. Let me make sure. But uh, this is the report. And what I found was interesting is that it's like a co-report also with, uh, looks like uh, Kai Sheffield, global head of crypto at Visa. Quite interesting. And this data from Visa and Illumin Lab shows that stablecoin volumes reached 461 billion. That's, half, that's almost half a trillion dollars in August alone. And if you want to take a look at that, here's the numbers. And we can see that, yes, stablecoins being used all over the world uh, in just last month alone was 460 billion. That was the third highest amount actually over here Looks like in March, wow, March 2024, it was over half a trillion, 521 billion uh, worth of transactions. So I think things are moving in the right direction. The thing is, why do I care about this, Rob? I don't care. The American government will care because, again, like I said, you are putting this into the hands of people that can't get and are unbankable, as it states right here. Whopping 98% of stable coins in circulation are currently backed by US dollars, making the USD even more dominant in the sector of foreign exchange dominance. Tether accounts for 69% of the 170 billion stablecoin market. So that's the first thing. The second thing of why you think this might be actually a good thing is where this is actually built on for the rails. So if we take a look as far as the blockchains, this is why I think when people say Ethereum's dead, it's not working. Hold on. Most of the things that are being done, especially for stablecoins, Ethereum. And for some reason, Tron. I don't know why people still love Tron. I, the people that I interact with in like other parts of, of Southeast Asia and, and that, that type of area, they always are asking for Tron. I think it's because they can use Binance. Same thing with uh, parts of uh, the EU. And then also you have Solana, BSC, Avalanche, Arbitrum, Optimism. And of course, Arbitrum, Optimism, Polygon are side chains or layer twos, whatever you want to call them. And then also base. So again, why should you care? It's because stable coins are being built, especially mostly Tether, and this, these are the ones that are being used. So if you were like, I don't know which ones to go into, look right here, and this is it. This camp, I'm not giving you financial advice. I'm just saying, if you don't know like which ones, take a look at the massive amount of volume. And then lastly, as far as like Tether, how does that stack up? Pretty good against BlackRock. This is a report actually, I wanna say it was a couple of days ago. I'm not for sure this was 24 hours. But this is from John Ma, and a lot of people have been talking about this, that Tether, now think about this too. Tether did four and a half billion dollars worth of profits in Q1 2024. It's pretty good. Just a stable coin, essentially. While BlackRock did 1.5 billion of net income in Q1. Tether's Q1 profit was three times the net income of BlackRock in Q1 2024. And think about it this way. If you take a look at that and break that down per employee, Tether has 150 employees. So that's $300 million profit per employee. BlackRock has almost 20,000 employees. That's 75,000 net income per employee. Imagine that, a stable coin that reaches all the way around the world where people who are unbanked and do a lot of great things, they're hugely profitable. Who would have thunk it? Anyhow, that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, let me talk about it's time sensitive. Now, if you want to uh, do a little Q&A, I'll answer all your questions, and we'll go from there. If you gotta take off, enjoy the Friday, enjoy the weekend. Thanks so much.